Well, hello there. Post-op day one. I'm going to talk to you about my experience with my gyno surgery and how it went. You'll notice I'm not wearing a shirt. That's because it's kind of hard to talk about it and show you what the results were of the surgery if I had a shirt on. And I'm apparently flashing you my bookshelf too. Boom. Got to keep it classy, San Diego. But before we get too deep into the weeds, let's start with the spiel. The men's spiel. Warning! This is for entertainment purposes only. Do not take this seriously. This is not medical advice. Although I'm a doctor, I'm not your doctor yet. If you want me to be your doctor, clip the link in the description box. But otherwise, this is just for fun, kids. Don't do this at home. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. Hey, so as you'll see, my camera works a little fuck today. That's because it's, um, well, I'm on a lot of drugs. No, I'm kidding. I'm on some painkillers, not a lot of painkillers, but I figure you probably want to see what the damage is. Let's see if I can stand up. So... It's not that bad. I can't really see it. Let me break this bitch off. And... This is the closest I've actually gotten to look at it. Oh, this one looks messy. Sorry, it's gross. In two days, I'll be able to take a shower. And, oh, somebody didn't have their VA today. Some of you are too young to get that joke. All right, so... All of you are too young to get that joke. So, what am I talking about? So, in 48 hours, I can take a shower. So don't come close. I'll basically just be at home watching the new season of uh, Force. That's Power Book 4. Um, I love me some Tommy Eaglin. That guy is a fucking moron. <laughs> it's like all alpha, no brains. Tommy Eaglin. I got chocolates from my new friends at Star Plastic Surgery. I'll put the link in the description box. That this lady, I did the math, she has done 20,000 breast surgeries, whether um, bodybuilder taking out gyno or putting in implants into ladies. Um, she's good stuff. So, Dr. Oslin. And, uh, you know, obviously I can't talk about how it's going to look when I'm done, but... You know, a plastic surgeon is an artist, so the idea is they're going to make your breasts look better. And obviously, women are going to be picky, but probably pro bodybuilders are going to be pickier because we actually, our career depends on it. And she was trained by a bodybuilder to do gyno surgery. So that's like a really big deal to me that this is somebody who actually knows what the specific criteria is. And she said there's basically two ends of the spectrum and nobody in the middle. There's either dudes with actual boobs or they lost a lot of weight and they've got sagging skin or it's a bodybuilder that is a very serious bodybuilder. If someone's willing to prophylactically get the glands removed to prevent getting any visible gyno, like as soon as there starts to be like a little bit thing popping up, they cut it out because they don't want to get in the way of their career. That is an extremely small population of bodybuilders, and that is the types of people that come in. So I don't know how many, what her rate is compared to others, but it was a very reasonable price. I ended up paying $3,500. Now, as some of you know, I was going to go to Turkey to get my hair fixed. I know it probably looks pretty good today, but you see like it's a little bit thinner on top. So um that's two grand 2500 bucks to do it in turkey and 1100 dollars for the plane ticket it would have been three grand more to do the gyno surgery there and they kept talking about liposuction i'm like motherfuckers this isn't liposuction this is cutting the gland out like i might have some fat but i can lose that on my own like i've got i used to have striations through my nipples and now i would, was going to have a gyno mass on one side and not the other can't be having that. So you got to cut it cut out. That it was not painful. It, the, light, the lidocaine plus epinephrine 
the epinephrine is supposed to constrict the blood vessels so there's not excess bleeding but the um lidocaine was very effective at managing pain i did it awake because i'm afraid to get put under because i don't want to die in my sleep i guess it means i want to live but that's that and that's pretty much all it comes down to is this was prophylactic surgery. It wasn't like I was insecure about it. It didn't bug me. I'd have no problem taking my shirt off at the beach or the pool. Not that I go out, but I didn't want to lose the fat and have a gland there that was visible on one side and not the other and get placed down over it. Then I just shot a year over nothing. You know, I, I, I play to win. I don't play for second. Speaking of seconds, I'm really proud of my friends, John Jewett and Roman Fritz for getting second um, yesterday. Where is it today? It was yes, It was Sunday. What day is today? Monday. Yes. Apparently the drugs are working quite well. Oh yeah. Like, subscribe, share the shit out of this video. Send it to people who are thinking about getting gyno surgery. Send it to people who will think they, I don't know. I, I'm going to say something professional. Hold on. Look, it's coming. It's coming. Oh, yeah. You should hire me for coaching and or medical help that there's a link in the description box and there's options. Click the consult option. So you click this link in the description box and then there's a link tree and the top of the link tree is the consult. Pick that and then we will talk and we will figure out what you need. Um, you could send me questions via email, but there's only so much I can answer via email. Really, the consult's the way to go. And um, we'll have fun time talking about you and your goals. The comments is ideally for generalized questions. If you're going to give me like, this is my cycle, what do you think about it? It like, sounds like a consult for you because consults are for, you know, the comment section is not to avoid the, con the consult. The comment section is there for generalized stuff like, are you going to use BPC-157? Why, in fact, I am. And um, I shot a video showing how to mix up the BPC-157, and I fucked it up. That was, happens to all of us. I didn't use StreamYard. I used my dumbass phone, and it didn't work. So I'm going to use micrograms of BPC-157. I've already done that in each nipple. And I also am using 500 micrograms of TB500. I, I, I misspoke. I load the syringe with 100 micrograms of TB with of BPC157 and 500 micrograms of TB500. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time because I don't even know if I fucked it up. Thank you, drugs. So I <laughs> loaded the syringe with 100 micrograms. 100 micrograms of BPC-157 and 500 micrograms of TB-500. It's like fucking Star Wars droids. And then I put half in one nipple and half in the other nipple. And people are like, bit, bit, bit. <laughs> yes, in theory, it goes through your whole body. But it's not going to go to the less because you injected right on the nipple. So, like, it's like the ATM machine. When I was growing up, my mom told me, don't use the ATM machine. Actually hand the money to someone inside and get a receipt. Because you never know if the ATM machine is going to do what it's supposed to do. Was she wrong? Yes, yeah, she was wrong. But it was logical. And I'm of the same mind. Like, if I want to grow my tricep, I'm not going to inject my body fat with fucking GH. That, to me, is fucking retarded. That... If it works everywhere, go exactly where you want it to go. It's like, um, I'm trying to think of a non-dirty joke that isn't going to get me banned. But <laughs> they're all dirty jokes, and they're all going to get me banned. Let's not be the next Seth Barossi. So the long and the short of it is, I'm going to inject the tissue that I want to fix. That's it. And if somebody thinks that's stupid, I think they're stupid because the idea that BPC-157 makes it through your whole body was based off, well, you can swallow it. It's because it was designed for gastric peptic ulcers. That's why you can swallow it for ulcers. But if you've got a tendon that you're trying to hypervascularize, there's no blood flow to the tendon. So even if it goes through the whole body, it isn't going to get to the tendon. That's the whole point of putting the tendon. What's the point of putting it here? technically because it's going to increase blood flow to the area and the blood flow will carry with it my gh and my androgens which should speed up healing recovery time that anavar not that i'm using anavar but six milligrams of anavar 
it's supposed to cut healing time in half. Therefore, if I'm using 2,200 milligrams of other stuff, that should probably work as good as six milligrams of Anivar. I mean, between you and me, it's going to work better. And same thing, it's like two units of GH will heal you. Well, fuck, I'll use 14 because that's what I was doing anyway. So the idea is to take my magical blood and transport it to the tissue with BPC-157. Now, the TB-500 is there is to cut down a neutrophil infiltration. The neutrophils go to the tissue and it's supposed to kill everything it finds with, um, I think it's histamine granules that causes cell lysis. And we don't need that because I'm taking Keflex. And you're thinking, wait a minute, but Keflex is an antibiotic and antibiotics wipes out your gut microflora. In long term, it does. In short term, like a two or three day course, it shouldn't. But to prevent any problems, I got refrigerated sauerkraut and kimchi. Now, I who taught me all these beautiful, wonderful tricks? Dr. Dahlia Clausen, Colton, Dr. Karina Dodson. Um, I even consulted with Kurt Haven to make sure my plan was sound. And luckily, everybody was on the same page as me. Some people had some details that I hadn't considered, but for the most part, I was going to cut fish oil before surgery. I didn't need to cut anything else. And I was going to use these four horsemen of healing, um, androgen, um, GH, TB500, and BPC157. And then to cut down on infection, you're going to use, I don't need it. It was in a real surgical suite. It wasn't just in someone's garage, but still because she's thorough she prescribed keflex which is great for um, wounds it's kind of like amoxicillin it's a different family it's a keflexin family but it's early i'm pretty sure it's a beta lactam antibiotic but i'm not sure i have to look that up i probably should have looked it up before i took it but i've taken keflex is what i always understood keflex is the first line for actual broken skin injury and it, it because it's supposed to be relatively specific for skin flora like staphylococcus aureus so that being said i'm going to protect my microflora with prebiotics is what karina explained of kimchi and um sauerkraut now i thought they were live probiotics and then there are other fancier probiotics but she set me straight about that luckily she's my business partner so if i don't know something Karina knows it. So when you hire us for coaching, you get the two doctors for the price of less than a whole doctor. Um, we're probably one of the cheapest coaching businesses in town and it's two doctors. And also you get your HRT clinic and your medical doc and your coach in the same business. So it's just saving money hand over fist because I'm cheap or frugal or parsimonious. Pick the word that you like best. You know, there's always a derogatory term, a neutral term, and a complimentary term that if they don't like you, you're weird. If they like you, you're enigmatic. You know, so it's just same fucking thing. It's just whether they like you or not. The same thing like he's so confident. If they don't like you, he's so arrogant. I like, never could figure out the difference before. And the difference is if they don't like you. It's like he's got a bad attitude. It means that they don't like your attitude. Not that there's something wrong with your attitude. It, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. So clearly I'm on drugs because I'm acting like Tim Dillon, my favorite comedian ever. And if you want to ask me general questions about what we're talking about, feel free to ask me questions in the comment section. Or if you want to give me sweet show recommendations while I'm not able to lift for a couple weeks, or some new metal bands like um, Decapitated Tyrant. My buddy Kevin turned me on to Decapitated Tyrant. I think that's what they're called. Hold on, let me look. I'm going to pause it so you don't have to wait. My bad, it is Disembodied Tyrant. Can't get those mixed up because a Disembodied Tyrant would probably be like a transdimensional lich and a Decapitated Tyrant. I don't really know anything that survives decapitation except for maybe liches. And so it's a lich band either way. So Van Lichtenstein should be the town of liches. <sighs> Enough of this shit. You guys are like, shut the fuck up, Todd. You're your nonsense for 15 fucking minutes. 
if you like this video at all, you're crazy and you have nothing else to do. But if you really did like it, that there's a peptide video I did with Kurt that's way more to the point. It's the peptide video. I think it's called Peptides Are Banned? Question mark. And I, you're like, wait a minute, are they? And I'm not going to answer you. I'm going to let you watch the first video so that you get two views so I can build up my empire of clout because clout's where it's at. That gets us advertisers and advertisers get us editors and editors will make this dumb shit be more clear and fun for everyone. Not my delusional eccentric ramblings. Toodles.